Okay, so everybody knows, with elbows in, I need to get from here to underneath here. And the reason is because this is, this is so dominant for controlling his upper body when I'm here. When I lift his shoulder off the ground, I've trapped his arm, uh, I have many attacks from here. It's a prime position if you like your side control attacks. If you don't, even transitioning to other positions like the back, the mount, and your belly, this is still one of the best positions to be. Uh, unless you're training with someone who doesn't, you know, who isn't very good with their, their defense, chances are you're going to have someone who, at the very least, know, understands basic framing, which is this keeping this here. And you're not going to give you that, that ability to go here. And you can't even just lift it up and, and get it because it's just wedged in too tight. So with the knowledge you have, he can either defend you coming up or he can defend neck. And we'll look at that later. But it's really hard to unless you have extremely long arms to defend both neck and the elbows. But first thing a demonstration. I want you all to basically hug the arm and lie your entire body onto it and ask your opponent from that position to pull his arm out. Okay, maybe if you can take my back from here. Not really. So you're all going to do that just as a demonstration for why you need the arm isolated away from his body and your body here. You could even vary it up by sitting here like this. Again, try to take your arm out. Try to take my back. So that's the reason why it's much better to be in this space here than over here trying to do all your fancy stuff because he is defending very, very well for you. So everyone in your pair, just for a second, and we'll come back on to do that. Okay, one, two, three. It is, we're going to go from where he's covering here, from here to, and he's relaxing, to here. Now, Wayne will tell you, good judoka will tell you, you don't hold it here, do you? With a massive space here, and his arm really loose, because it's so easy to escape. You pick the arm up, you fill the space, and you're doing exactly what you just did, which is basically making this arm immobile, all right? And then you ask your partner to try and escape from here. I'm sure there are escapes and counters, but you're delaying what you can do. The problem is how to get here, all right? Ethan doesn't let me, he holds here, he pulls a frame. It's not gonna happen. So we need to find a way of opening this elbow out, and that's, that's the difficulty. So there's various methods. The one I like is part two, the one I am less good with is, is this one I'm going to show you, but you might be better at. So what you're going to do is you're going to clamp onto his elbow, uh, his shoulders here, and you're going to let him take the weight with your, um, your weight is going on his frames. Okay? So you're going to, and you're going to lift him up. When you do so, that rolls his body that way. See what's happening with his elbow here? The elbow follows it. And then what you're going to do is you're going to use this hip Get this further away to do that. This works in no gi or gi, it's just a simple mechanical thing. If you try and do this from here, when his back is flat, you're just going to do it. It doesn't work. But when he's rolled, his arm is weaker, you can get much more of a hit underneath to leave that open, and then you fill that space with the scarf holes and show. Okay? So here's the thing you're not even going to bother trying to lift this up, it's just too hard. So you want to take your weight and roll him over onto the side here. It looks like you're unbalanced. But trust me, once he starts to shove you over that way, he's opening up his elbow anyway. More experienced people are not going to do that. Remember to clamp onto the shoulders. Let him take your weight. Look at my knees, they're off the ground. I'm rolling him over. As soon as I feel his body has turned a little bit and his elbow is exposed, my hip now fills the space. I lift up and I take that space here. And then we're here. In this position, we talked about filling the space. Back on. And from here, I want to overwrap the arm. Now we can lift, because there's no, no little resistance from here. Now we can lift and convert this into our favorite side control with cross face. So once again, he's framing. Try to lift up your heart, let him take your weight. Roll, use your far hip, the one on this side to lever open, fill the space, over, pick the arm, make sure that arm cannot escape. Then replace with regular side control with the cross face. 
Everyone understand? Yes. It's a nice way to do it. One, two, three. Yeah. So, um, <clears throat> I took there were two versions of this technique. So this one relies on this hip bone reaching open his elbow. The next technique relies on this hip bone reaching open his uh, elbow. And it's the one I have a little bit more success over than I prefer. Problem is, just doing this again, when he's flat and he's quite strong here, just turn you just turn. It's, it's futile. You need to create a mechanism where he is turned there. Now see how the elbow and it presents more of the elbow for you to wedge open. Whereas when he's flat, it's just gonna come off. Alright. So how do we get this? It's quite simple. Jump in here, hand goes here, and I'm traveling down. And as I travel down, that present presents his elbow to then bring back up here. So it's for me it's simple. I find that more intuitive to do. And I also really, I'm a big fan of, whenever I get cycle control, it's just doing that anyway. Travelling down, I mean, a few weeks ago I was teaching guard passing and then mm. reverting back now, because it just twists them up and it's, you're weakening in that structure. So again, the thing I'll do for the family as well, his elbows are tucked in, his elbows are tucked in, it's quite tight, you haven't got, maybe you want to try this one, it's not quite working, keep the arm here. You need, because this will form the basis of your side control. You don't want to start going this. And try with this. And yet, you're defensively weaker like that. So keep this here. Hand goes to the other side. Not, you're not just moving the legs here. Yeah? Some people are quite, quite stable from here. You're moving your lower body down. There, presenting your bottom, if you like, to him, and using your bottom as a sort of scoop to scoop his elbow. If he's slightly on his side, that's what you want. But if he's completely on his side, you've missed your chance because his elbow is gone. So what you want is that little twist. So his knees are totally pointing that way, but his, his, he's not flat, but he's still twisted up. Just enough to get that target point here, okay? So, from here, I'm moving down. I'm using my bottom and scooping out. It might take several scoops until, guess what? I'm right in this very, very high side position here with the arm completely immobilized. If you want to switch because of the time, remember with the basics, this arm does not leave you. It cannot move. Back again. And then we have pull in. Get into the habit of don't just being here. Pull in. Make him look away. Then you have the basis of a very, very strong, good side position, which you all be good at. Yes? Okay, reach on this guy.